Hello everyone, I'm Theranza Walsh and this is Art from the Heart at St. Augustine's Church. And for this session, our subject is Art Deco. I find it really exciting. I'm not an expert in Art Deco, but uh, we will apply uh, the basic knowledge that we know about Art Deco. So first of all, what is Art Deco? Well, Art Deco uh, is mainly characterized by bold geometric shapes and uh, very strong colors. And um, this was uh, very popular during the 1920s and 30s. And um, it's actually a very stylish uh, design. And um, we will start uh, with simple geometric shapes, uh, applying uh, the technique using lines. And this is our goal uh, for this activity. So let's start. So for this activity, uh, first, uh, we would need to divide our paper into two parts. So the first half would be this one with the geometric lines. We would make this slight. We would make it slightly different from this one. This was the one we did in class, and um, then on this one we will do a cityscape with the sun shining on the city. Okay, so let's start, and uh, we begin, as I mentioned, by dividing this sheet of paper into the two equal parts. Now, since I don't have a ruler. I will use this um, sheet of A4 paper as my guide. So what I'm gonna do is just to fold this in the middle, exactly in the middle. And I am going to mark this end with a pencil. Okay. And I will use this as my guide, as I mentioned. So now I am going to put it under uh, the paper I'm gonna use, which is also an A4 size paper, but uh, or watercolor. I'm just, I'm just going to mark this point and then I'm going to turn this paper around and then I am going to use this side. Okay, so I'm going to mark this again and the next step would be to draw a line right in the middle. So I will use this sheet of paper that I've used previously. So I am just going to draw a straight line. I will try. <laughs> okay, so I have a line uh, dividing it into two. And then I will divide this side again by two. So I do that by folding this side of the paper. So the edge touching the middle of the paper. I'm going to press it. I'm going to mark it. here and again I'm going to put it under my paper and then I am going to mark the paper here and then I am going to flip this one over and do it on the other side so from the edge here so I will align the edge of uh, my guide to be right below this line and the edge of my paper to be right along the middle of my uh, guide. So I'm going to mark this as well. And then I will connect these two points with a straight line. So my goal here is to generate those geometric shapes that uh, we would need for the design we will create. So we now have this. So I have one, two, three parts. So this part uh, has two areas. And in the two areas, I will further uh, put markers here. Okay. So here I am going to fold this again, similar to what I did earlier. So I'm going to make sure that the edge 
Okay, that make sure that that corner in particular is right on that mark I made earlier. Okay, and then I'm going to mark that with a pencil so I can see it. And then just like earlier, I will put it under the sheet of paper, like so, and then mark it here. Then I'm going to move this here now so that the edge is exactly under this line. And then I'm going to mark this point again. So that will be the middle in between those two lines. I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I will begin with this one. Okay, again, this side is aligned and exactly under the edge of my guide. Then I'm going to mark it. Then I'm going to move it to the other side. Again, same process. And I have one, two, three, four marks on my paper. And now the next thing is to put the mark dividing this two. Okay. So to do that, I would need to fold my guide in this manner. Okay. And then after that, I will press this area. Mark it with a pencil, like so. And then just like earlier, I am going to put exactly underneath uh, my, the sheet of paper I'm going to use for the art piece. Like so. And then I am going to mark it. Now I'm going to do the same thing here but I cannot move the paper there. So I will mark it on this side. So same thing. And now I will, I will not draw a line here, but I will mark this the intersection here with the small, a short line with my pencil, like so. So now, let me erase this. Hey, let me just get an eraser. I don't my eraser has suddenly disappeared, so I will use the eraser I have here. Okay, the eraser is not uh, as clean as I would like it to be, but it's uh, good enough for me. So I will let that as is. And here for this side, I will fold my paper to a certain uh, level and it's going to be slightly different for this one because for this one I am going to insert my paper the one I'm going to use for the artwork the one I'm using for the artwork I'm going to insert it here and then just mark this point here and this point here this is at the end edge of this uh, paper I'm going to do the same for the other side. Okay, so I'm gonna mark this point here and this point here. Perfect. So I, I now have all the marks that I need on the paper. Now I will start drawing the line and I will start here at the corner. So this would be like the sun's rays fanning out. So that's one. And then here's another. Yeah. 
and then here's another. So I've now done this side. I'm now going to do this side. So exactly the same design. I'll turn it around so you can see. So now I'm now creating a mirror image of this side on this side, uh, symmetrical to this line. Okay, and then the next one would be from here to here. And then here on the other side. So this is what I have now. And now relative to this, I'm going to create the mirror image of this. So first thing I'm going to do is to connect these two points. Okay, and next would be to connect this point to this point over here. Okay, and then this point to this point over here. So now I have this side, and again, it's going to be a mirror image, so I have to do it on this side as well. Sorry about that. So now I'm just going to connect the lines. Like so. And then this one. Okay. Okay, and you might be wondering what these two points are for. So I'm going to add an additional line, okay? From here to this corner and from here to this corner. So let's do that. Fantastic. And then we're going to do the same thing to this one. And then again, the mirror image. So from the middle to the corner, from the middle to the other corner. Okay. 
Oh dear. I do have to erase that because that will affect uh, the drawing or the image of the painting that we are trying to create. So let me just get my eraser and I will do that. So I've erased that um, excess line that I've accidentally drawn. And then I will connect this point now to this point here at the corner. So I now have my geometric design on this part of the paper. But yes, as I mentioned, the design here is different. It's much simpler than what we did. You can actually do a simpler design. But again, uh, what I want to emphasize here is the importance of symmetry and the straightness of the lines, the solidness of the appearance. And uh, for this part, okay, I am now going to draw the sun first. So that would be a circle. Or if you can find something like um, that you can use uh, for the shape, for example, this one, to give it a more perfect appearance. Okay, we can also bring it down a little bit. But in this case, I will only bring it down maybe three quarters. And I will use this as my guide. You can use something else, uh, perhaps um, uh, a cover for something or something that you're not using, something dry and clean that you can use as a guide for the circle. Now, we will proceed with creating the city before we draw the sun's rays. So for this city, I will start here in the middle. I will draw a rectangle in the middle. Okay, this one. Like so. Okay. And then this one probably slightly thinner than the other building, the other rectangle. So I'm going to just draw a line there. And then here, a slightly higher line. Okay, let's make it even higher. So I want this building to be to appear to be uh, taller. Okay, and then here we draw another line going down. Perfect. And then on the other side, we're going to do the same things. Same thing. As you can see, these are just a bunch of lines. Uh, but later on, when we connect it, you will see what I mean uh, by the building. Okay, for this one, maybe I should make it uh, a bit um, higher. So. The building would be higher, that means the line has to be longer, slightly longer. Let's do that. Okay. And then here. Another rectangle, maybe a taller building as well. Like so. 
Okay, so now we have these lines. So the first thing I'm gonna do would be to connect. Okay, let me just turn it around so it's easier for me to uh, draw a line across. So this would be the lowest building I have. And I do have a little space here, so I'm just gonna connect that. And that's my first building. Okay, the second one would be this. And then here, I am going to draw a slanted line. So I, as you can see, I now have three buildings there. Okay, now I am going to draw a horizontal line here. Like so. And here a slightly lower building. Okay. Let's make it just slightly lower, not too low. Okay. So let's just make putting shapes or uh, rectangles uh, here to represent uh, the buildings. And here I want to have like uh, this sort of roof. So I have that one. Beautiful. And then here, just my regular building. Perfect. So another rectangle. And here another rectangle. So I'm just going to close this top. It's easier if you have a ruler, but I don't seem to have one uh, at the moment. So uh, we can just use any straight edge. But make sure that it's something you will not be using because, I mean, it's something you will not be using in the future because. It might have some uh, pencil marks or even some paint on it uh, after the work. So it's um, better to use something that you think, you believe that you will no longer be uh, using. So after this exercise, I can throw this sheet away or make it the test sheet for the colors. So it's no longer going to be used um, to present my actual art piece here we go yeah but i want to make this even more exciting just like what i did in the other one so i i am going to draw another square here or rectangle depending on the proportion and here on top a triangle and we now have uh, our city and as my students uh, say, they call it the town. So we've done the town. So now it's just the sun's ray. So we connect uh, the line uh, outside on the circle, okay, to um, the city itself. Okay, like so. Oh, fantastic. So we have almost half of it done. Now we just have to do the other half. Okay. 
Okay, I'm not doing this um, very precise. I'm not measuring it. I'm just uh, getting a rough estimate of the distance in between the rays, but it would actually be better if um, the distance is measured. But the purpose of this activity is to learn and not be stressed about it. So I'm not gonna stress you with measuring um, the distance between the rays. But again, uh, if we're going to be strict about it, it should uh, be more or less symmetrical. I think um, roughly, we have achieved that because if we look at it from afar, the image would be roughly symmetrical. I mean, the distribution of the rays. So now we have our sketch, we can start painting. And the first thing I would like you to do is to paint this side. And we begin by painting this side with water so that we can create a flat wash. Now, what I used previously would be purple. Uh, for this, for the other one, but I believe that one is too light. So for this one, okay, I will try to make the color more intense, just a little bit. So again, we paint water on the paper, just water, um, enough to make the sheet wet, but not uh, too wet to be dripping. Okay, now it's ready for our paint. Okay, I think this is too red. So I'm just going to add a little bit more blue to this mixture. And I still think it's too red. So again, I will add a little bit more blue. Oh, I think that's much better. And now we start painting it. I think that's nice. And because we painted the sheet with water first, it's going to, <clears throat> excuse me, distribute the color evenly. Well, more or less. Okay, I don't want to waste this. Okay, so now we painted the, this side of the sheet with the color we like. Let me just dry the table, wipe it clean with this uh, kitchen towel. And then I am going to clean my brush. So I'm gonna rinse, okay. And the next part I would like to paint would be the sun. Okay, the sun I would, um, paint with bright uh, canary yellow. Yes, I'm not going to do a flat wash with this because the space is not that big for me to need to do so. Okay, that means that that means that I won't see the dried uh, brush strokes on it. Uh, because I'm able to paint, continue painting before it dries. So now I will clean my brush again. And then I'm going to paint the building. So to paint the building, I would need to uh, paint it with water first because it's now a relatively larger area. Okay. 
there we go how beautiful so it's now painted with water now i am going to paint that with blue, blue green paint so that is, that's a mixture of green paint i'm just mixing that just use that and then let me get some blue paint okay so there's my blue green paint for my buildings and i'm gonna start painting now okay and then this bit here And then here. Okay, I have to do this faster because it's already drying in some areas. Okay, now again, I'm going to clean the table by wiping the paint off and I'm going to clean my brush. Okay, so now the next thing to do is to let this area dry so we can paint this. And while doing so, we will begin painting this side of the art piece. Okay, I will paint um, the lines blue. Okay, so this one, let me start with this corner. I'm using my round brush for this one. So it requires a lot of control. Now, to make it easier for me, I will use my rigger and I will show you in a moment what that is. Okay, so. If we, you use the round brush, you, I mean, you can continue using your round brush, but it would take longer to do it. And it would also require um, more control. So if we use a rigger, it would be easier. So I've, I've cleaned that brush. Now it's time for me to get my rigger. So, here I uh, have this uh, back. I have this are my brushes. Yeah, I have a sword brush as well. Okay, this one is a rigger. Okay, you might not see the difference between the rigger and other brushes at this point. So I will give another brush, a regular brush, round brush, uh, about this size, so that we can compare uh, the difference. And I'm going to get that uh, sheet of paper I used as a guide. So this is the guide. Okay. And if we compare, if you can see the rigor is the one on top, the regular round brush shorter and the rigor is longer and thinner. And the rigor can carry a lot of uh, watercolor and it will help you to draw a straight line quite easily, much, much easier than your round brush. So we will continue and I will show you what I mean by using my rigor to apply um, the paint. So here,
Okay, for this one, I might need to do it again, perhaps on the other direction. But if you can see the dimension of the line that's, that was created um, is relatively equal on all areas. And it's easier. Um, usually with one stroke, it should, this, you should be able to do this. So what we're going to do now is just to continue using this and painting the lines. Like so. OK, this one is a bit thinner. Then we've adjusted that. And again, we will just continue doing that. So let me do that here. Yeah, oh, and there are also different sizes for the riggers. So there are thinner ones, shorter, smaller ones. And um, okay. so again, we will just continue doing this. So I will do that and come back to you once I painted all. So here I painted all the lines to create the geometric design I wanted on this side. Oh, by the way, you don't have to do it this way. You can actually do two separate uh, designs. I just uh, felt like I wanted to do a combination of the two uh, on one art piece. So you can just do this piece and that uh, would actually be amazing. So now I have to paint this area and um, I would like to paint this with yellow ochre. But before that, I am painting it with water. So that again, I can distribute the color more evenly. And I will be avoiding those unwanted um, stains uh, of uh, showing lines. That would be because of the paint that has dried. Similar to this one, but this would be covered with another layer of paint. So I'm not really worried. But in this area, it will be very obvious. So I would need to paint that with water first. Okay. And now I'm getting my yellow ochre for my sun's rays. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, and this one. Yes, I'm painting around the sun first, cleaning this area to prevent it from smudging my art piece. Okay, I think the paint is drying faster than I expected. So for this area, I need to be quick. Okay. in these areas as well. So water is drying quite fast. I need to add more water. Okay. So here.
Okay, and now we just have to let that dry. And while we're letting that dry, we can actually start on the buildings now. And again, I will use my rigger for this one. Just the lines, okay? I am going to use um, cerulean blue for this, cerulean blue. So which areas can I paint this area? And then let me move it a little bit here. Then I can paint this area as well. I hope I didn't make a mistake there. I think that's still wet. When you do this, please feel free to take your time. Pause the video if you need to pause it. Uh, go back to the beginning, middle, or any part of the video if you need to. Don't rush yourself. Just do it in a very relaxed face. Um, you can do it one part at a time. Again, as I mentioned, you can just do this part if you feel that it appeals to you more or you can do this side with the sun and the city. Okay, here we go. Wonderful. I need to get more cerulean blue. And that part is still wet, so I might need to do that later. So this one I've done. So part of it. And then this one. I really need to wait. I really need to be patient. So I would need to attend to the dry areas first. So let me do that. Again, no pressure. You shouldn't rush this. Then this bit here. Okay, I might need to use the round brush for this bit. Ooh. I might need to use the round brush for that bit as well. Okay. I am now going to attempt painting this part. Hopefully it's dry enough. If not, it might lead into the other color. And now I am going to clean my brush. Again, we just squeeze out the excess paint, rinse it, again, squeeze out the excess paint, and repeat the process until we are satisfied with the outcome. Okay, I'm still not satisfied, so I will keep on rinsing. Okay, so that's done. And I will put this back in um, my brush bag. So let me put that there. And I'm going to 
put the ba uh, brush back where it belongs. And then the next bit would be to retouch uh, the areas that need that needs to be retouched. So like this one. Ah, forgot this one. But that's all right. Okay, and this one as well. So make that thicker. Okay, now we have our building so a little bit, but that's okay. Now it has been taken care of. Okay, the next bit would be to paint these lines uh, with orange because that's my preferred color. You can use any color you want. Uh, you can use green or whatever color you want. I mean, you can even change the color of the sun. But I do love this because it mimics the color of gold. And um, in Art Deco, gold is actually used a lot. So let's do that. Let me just get my brush again. And here we go, my handy dandy rigger. Again, you can use your round brush for this, but it would require more effort and greater control. So for this one, I would do this area first. And now the sun's rays. Okay, so let's start here with the long ray. That is beautiful. And then here's the next one. And then we go to this short array over here. Okay, let me just clean this surface just to make sure it doesn't smudge on our painting. Okay, now I continue painting this area with orange. Okay, so oh, this is still wet, so I would need to avoid that. And this one. And this one. So to complete this art piece, we are now just missing two lines. And the lines I'm referring to would be an orange one here and a blue one here. And at this point, I would need to let it dry before I can actually uh, paint any other lines on it. Okay, it's now dry and ready for us to paint. But as I can see here, there's an area that needs to be retouched. So we're going to do that first. And then now we will paint this line. And 
I'm going to do that from the other side as well. So from the sun. Going to the buildings, just like the other rays. Okay, so now we painted the sun's rays. And one last thing before we can consider our art piece finished. And that is the line between the two art pieces. So I just have to paint the straight blue line and it should be done. Oops. Okay. So now we have our art piece. Our art deco art piece. So let's have a look. Just, just the screen. So I hope you enjoyed the session. And uh, we will have a few more art deco sessions um, with simple shapes just like this. Uh, I know that there are much more complicated designs, but uh, for the next three sessions, we are uh, not going to dwell into that, but for what we can achieve uh, during that time. Um, for next year, we might do more complicated art deco designs, uh, but we will start with this one with the simple uh, shapes. So I hope you enjoyed the session. And I'm looking forward to see you again in our next session. Bye-bye.